President Mohamed Buhari arrives in South Africa for talks with President Ramaphosa on the evacuation of Nigerians from South Africa. And the presidency has refuted rumors of a third term agenda. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome. The evacuation of Nigerians from South Africa has been suspended due to the scheduled visit of President Muhammad Bukhari to Pretoria. However, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has stated that the outcome of the talks between Nigeria's president and South African president would determine if there would be further evacuation of Nigerians from South Africa. Will this visit change things and stop xenophobia finally? I'm being joined by two great minds. I'll start with Martin Lumba. He's a political analyst. Thank you very much for coming. Pleasure to be here. And the lady that joins us is Ada Njamanze. She's a public relations practitioner. Pleasure to have you Thank join you us. Thank you for having me. He's gone. He's, he has arrived in South Africa. Some persons are asking the question, considering the situation, is this a good call? He's not there alone. He's there with, I think, seven ministers and three state governors. Is this the right call? Uh, it's a good call to be in South Africa. And um, this should have happened long before all of the xenophobic attacks. And I want to believe that his presence there will at least give the Nigerians in South Africa some measure of reassurance. But outside of that, the quality of his delegation, the quality of what they are going to deliberate upon, and the outcome, the takeaways from all of that, I'm not very sure that you know, we're going to see any difference, monumental difference. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that. But let, yes. let me bring you in and ask you, some persons are saying that it's almost like the victim going to the punisher to say, well done for what you've done. Some are arguing that it would have been more appropriate if the South African president comes to Nigeria to say, this is the situation. We are not xenophobic as is being, uh, or we're trying to work on it or something. What's your reaction to that position? Um, personally, I, I really don't see the difference. Um, the major thing is for a conversation to be opened. Let that line of conversation be opened. Let's start talking about this because before the same president, it's been, it's been happening. It's just has, it just hasn't received this spotlight. It's received now. So um, who goes to who, who comes to where, it's, it, to me it doesn't make any difference. Um, I'm, again, I'm also aware that uh, President Buhari's trip to South Africa involves more than a conversation on the attack. So he's yeah, also there's a summit uh, exactly. on the sideline. We'll, we'll get to the details exactly. of that. But again, there is the other angle to this visit. It is stopping the evacuation of Nigerians who have indicated interest to return home. And as at the moment, the uh, president, the Nigerian uh, diaspora president there says that there are over 700. He doesn't have the exact figure, but he says that there are over 700 people who have indicated interest to come back home. Why should the president visit hold the evacuation of people who are willingly deciding to come home? And it's not being sponsored by the presidency, for Very that true. matter. Um, it is surprising to people like myself that they will suspend the evacuation. And the reason why we have or hold the position is that now most of these people that want to return home, they have been, if you like, disadvantaged by the xenophobic attacks or other economic realities that they cannot cope with. For instance, if your store has been vandalized, if your goods have been stolen, if your means of livelihood is no longer assured, what are you remaining there doing? Again, uh, coming to Nigeria, there is somebody who is willing to save face for the government. So why suspend the action? I see no explanation that can satisfy you know, the argument that they should remain there. There is no basis for them to remain there. They should be evacuated 
let them gather themselves again and if they are interested maybe return at a much later time i'd like to hear your thoughts as well i mean i agree with him i really don't understand why that should be stopped these are people that walked to the high commission filled the form that they wanted to come back why stop that? The conversation is not going to change anything. The conversation he is going to have with the South African president, is that going to return the goods lost? Is that going to return the lives lost? You know, I was watching a documentary on this same issue, and people were telling their stories. So I'm trying to understand why stop that. So the airline is waiting for feedback. The uh, president, the South African president for Nigerians, is also saying that they can even give a number and then they're setting people that have very specific reasons why they want to come back that should have even left with the first and second planes and they didn't so why stop that it's not going to make any difference you're just going to have a conversation uh, we'll come back to reactions um, to the president's visits from some top Nigerians. But I, I want to ask this question. Uh, there are people who are saying, uh, the president of the Nigerian Association there is actually saying that there's been no more violence. They, they, they are, they, they're still continuing protests, but it's not violent anymore. And there's been some relative calm. Does that give you any sort of hope? Maybe that is the premise on which the presidency has taken the decision to stop evacuation? I, I don't think so. And I also believe that the last time I had this discussion in this studio, my perspective you know, on all of these issues is completely different from what most people see. And I am of the view that what we solved all along was a political dimension to the crisis in South Africa. The economic dimension to the crisis is still where it is. And for as long as we continue to dance around it, beat around the bush, we're not going to make any headway. That the protests are now more civil, it's a welcome development, but it's not really going to make any difference. I think that this visit other than maybe Jojo, as usual, in the African tradition, maybe bring cola nuts, bring water and all of that. No, 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 they just, should, just a minute, okay. they should delve specifically. They claim they want to talk about trade, they want to talk about investment, they want to talk about security. But I think that they should focus basically on an economic stimulus plan for the blacks, essentially. That is where the problem is. So this interaction, now let's talk about the summit now they, they are proposing to hold, including businessmen, investors, and all of that. This summit that they are proposing, do you see it? I mean, they are going to sign a communique at the end of the day. We've had scenarios where presidents <laughs> visit each other and they sign communique and that's the end of it. So, I mean, somebody says, is this going to be a repeat of that considering the magnitude of the xenophobic attack or we're going to see specific communique that has something to do with resolution on how to tackle xenophobic attack in that country going forward. We have to wait and see. Because you know, even right now, the presidency is being very vague about the information they are giving out about the conversations that are going to take place. My only worry, like he said, is even with the protests just being mild, there's still, it's just a deeper conversation. There's a deeper hatred that we haven't touched, you know? And for me, it's a political, it's, the visit is a political visit. That's what I see it as. I don't see it as something that is gonna mend the fences that are broken already, because this has been ongoing for a long time. If you've ever had a relative that has been in that country for more than 10 years, they can tell you these stories. But right now, we're now trying to pretend that, oh, all of a sudden it's new. So this conversation that they are going to have, would that get to the deeper roots of South Africa? Because some of these issues are coming from there. They're not coming from the big cities. Are we, are we hearing about the big cities having this protest? We're hearing about the smaller places. So how is this information going to get to them? What's the best way? I saw, I saw, I, I read that he's going to have a, a meeting with the Nigerians there. Community, yeah. What about the South African community? Who's going to have a meeting with them? Who's going to talk to them? Uh, well, those are questions that needs to be addressed. But, but then again, you look at the fact that 
we've sent a um, couple of envoy mm -hmm. over there and they've had discussion and we were told that on their return um, whatever it is that they agreed will be communicated to Nigerians and based on that uh, the president will make his decision on what steps to take what do you say this is part of an, um, the outcome from the envoy that was sent to South Africa uh, well, like I've maintained, it will appear that we're not really prepared to address the crisis. Even back home in Nigeria, you talk about the challenges that we are facing, for instance. You know that for you to give out something, it is usually because maybe you have surplus. You understand but in a situation where we have wants we have needs that have not been met we actually lack capacity to take care of our own challenges internally i wonder the kind of trade that we're going to discuss i wonder the kind of investment who is taking investment where for instance because the reality is that <laughs> we love to just if you like apply cosmetic you know touches to issues if the president of Nigeria is visiting South Africa for bilateral discussion and what have you, we must have some deep, if you like, material that everybody else can look at. You have an economic team, are they part of this delegation, for instance? The economic team that they just put together, the advisory council, they should be there. Like I said, for me, the problem is not really a political problem. It is an economic problem. And until we address the economic problem, in Nigeria, in South Africa, all of this talk is, sorry to say, a waste of effort. Uh, so you basically are also saying if you, if the meeting that you there should be a to early, blueprint that we can look at. We should be able to look at you know timelines that okay between now and now we we are going to achieve this. We want to get this. There is nothing on the table. This whole thing is just for photo shoot. It's just a waste of effort. I mean, unfortunately, the, the, you're basically implying that the situation will look calm now. Then when attention ha has moved to other places, it is the usual thing. I can yeah. give you a thousand instances. It's the usual. Thing, unfortunately, it so is. So, th th does that now, your position seems a little skewed towards um, Femi Falano, um, not Falano rather, um, Femi uh, Kayode, Fanny Kayode, the former aviation okay. minister. Mm -hmm. He's known to speak his mind on issues and he tweeted, let me see that tweet again. Uh, he says, a president does not reward a foreign power that has slaughtered his citizens with impunity with a state visit. And he describes the trip by the president as an insult uh, to a Nigerians. Is he being uh, extra as usual? Let me, let me bring, take that okay. question to you, Ada. Is he being extra as usual or he does have a point? I mean, if we, if we, if we take away his political aspirations <laughs> to the side, um, he has a point. You know, when, this, when the whole spotlight on the attacks came up, how many days did it take before the government responded? Our government took a while. Mm. What, what, were they in the room thinking about the best response? But it took a while. It took days. We're, we're, so, we're, so, we're governed by silence. This, our, when the responses we get from our government is usually five days after a situation. So now, the excuse is we're going to South Africa to have a conversation, but the convoy that, or the envoy that was sent, have they given us a feedback? I mean, did you read anything in the paper on this is how the trip went? This was, these are the topics that were discussed. Uh, this was the solution that we provided for the short time before the president makes a visit. Because we just woke up this morning and got, uh, uh, we saw the press release from the publicity that uh, the president is going to South Africa. But we sent people. Where's the communication line? We don't have that. So again, that is why people can afford to say it's an insult. You, we've had people that have lost their properties, lost their lives. We have people that are still stranded. You stopped the evacuation process that is not even done by a Nigerian-owned airline, um, by, by a government-owned airline. It's by a private citizen who volunteered, and he was commended. Before then, what were, the, what were the measures that were being taken? So we have a lot of, there's so many things, there's so many factors to consider when, when we're talking about this South African situation. And it's so sad because we, if we look at, like you said, the economic implication of these things,
that's the major that's the major setback for everybody involved if we remove the economics then what else do we have martins yes if you were to make um take an overview of the action that the presidency has taken since the xenophobic uh, the, the current xenophobic uh, wave of xenophobic attack uh, occurred put them side by side with actions you would have preferred that the government take and then let's see a solution um, so far what has the government actually done the government has discussed with the envoy from south africa the government has also discussed with our own envoy we have given maybe directives and then again you know beyond that the president now has visited south africa Outside of that, I don't really see what the government has done. Because, like I said, the private individual, a peace man, you know, he saved face for the government. And so far, the government has not even said or put in motion what exactly they're going to do for this individual who is an outstanding gentleman, an outstanding patriot. He's probably more patriotic than those in government. So to that extent, I want to say that I'm highly disappointed by the way the government has carried on, the delay, the response delay, and again, the lack of intelligence, because that's the way I see it. Because again, a man who is being beaten by mosquito, and every time all he has in mind is to go and get treatment for malaria, instead of looking for how to stop the mosquitoes from biting him i think it's foolishness that is the position where nigeria has taken and unfortunately we are not demonstrating capacity and to that extent i want to believe that the rest of the world are just looking at the entire country as a joke unfortunately so what would have been a proper yes. line of course now, of action? Now, now that the president is in South Africa, he's going to engage Nigerians there. I will suggest that he also engages the South Africans. They are our brothers. Again, I want to believe that the best way forward is an economic stimulus plan. That is the only way. Because the South African whites, you never see them in all of these uprisings. But this economic uh, plan you're talking about, yes. it's going to take quite a while to put in How place. How much while will it take? It won't really take much while. The truth is that the way I see it, if you pour water in a glass, or you put water in a spoon, or you drink from a bottle, they have different impacts. The fact is, if we identify the problem as it is, we'll be able to solve it. Uh, do you agree with that? Or you have a, a preferred plan of action that would have seemed more effective for you? So, again, we've been having conversations. Nigeria, we're known to talk. We can, we, we can talk from now to tomorrow. What's the action plan? We need an action plan that works. We, why do we have an increasing number of people leaving Nigeria? We need to start tackling that first. When we start tackling that number of, the number of people leaving the country, and why are they leaving the country, that would help us say, OK, do you know what? We come to South Africa. This is the issue. This is the issue the South Africans have with the foreigners, because let's not say the Nigerians, because it's a general issue. Unfortunately, the Nigerian number is always higher. But this is the issue. How can we solve this? How can we come to an agreement with the South Africans there to make them understand that, look, you have your people in our country working. They're not disturbed. You know, we're trying to all grow. Basically, we're trying to grow Africa. We're not trying to grow an individual country. We're trying to grow Africa. So these action plans are things that the government should tackle. So all these agreements and importation, and it's, honestly, it's, it's tiring. It's tiring because personally, I feel like it's, not, it's really not. We just keep talking. The next government is going to come 2023 and we'll continue talking. 
We, we hope not. We hope that we'll have no, let's, better, let's, let's, we'll let's, have a more proactive uh, governance in place. Yes. Oh, I mean, the day is still young. They, they have four years. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll, we're still on course, but I, I want to deviate slightly and mm -hmm. talk about the makeup of the president's uh, entourage. Mm -hmm. Now, we have seven ministers and we have three governors. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I didn't pay so much attention as to who else was on that entourage, but the name Ganduje stood mm. out for me. Why? There was supposed to be a court verdict on his election as governor of his state today. That verdict was not read out before he left. Let's not also forget the fact that there are a series of corruption allegations against this man. Now, of what import is his presence in the president's uh, entourage, considering you know the things that we know, we, that, that allegations against him basically, should he be in President Buhari's entourage, one who champions, says he champions corruption, anti-corruption, and, and who is uh, against uh, anti-corrupt, who is uh, championing the anti-corruption fight and all of that? Basically, you get what I'm trying to say. I do. Why is he there? Um, the, the best people that can answer that question will be the people that put him in that delegation. But for me, I feel that he had no business in that entourage. And the reason is simple. We know his story. We also know his pedigree. And every now and again, this government, this APC government, this President Buhari administration, continues to, you know, spite the Nigerian intelligence. It's like, you can't do anything about the position we have taken. You can't go to hell. We don't give a damn. Because a man who was caught on camera, a man who had, you know, a tribunal judgment pending, I mean, what business does he really have being on that entourage? Perhaps there are things they needed to discuss which really had nothing to do with the South African event. They just needed that privacy. They just needed that, if you like, uh, tourist, um, you know, uh, if you like, outing to be able to discuss. Because uh, it's quite ridiculous for me that Ganduje every now and again we look at this man and we say, oh, has Nigeria gone this low? Now you basically do not agree with his being part of the... He has no business there. What, what, do you, what is your thought? I mean, I, I do not agree with him being there. Um, not just because of the stories we've read about him or heard about him. He currently has a case. If we want to be... If we want to actually follow the laws he shouldn't be out of the country. There's a pending case that if whether he knew today was going to be the day the results were going to be called, but he shouldn't leave. Yeah. That's just what I say. I, I see it as it's something, it's not like you're breaking the law, but you currently have a court case. So what's taking you out there? What conversation are you going to have with the South African government? I guess we will have to pause. I'm just told we are done with this segment. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on thank the program. You. And thank you for staying with us. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be speaking again on President Bukhari. But this time, we'll be looking at the third-term presidency saga. Stay with us.